Welcome to my video. I'll trust you'll find it helpful and informative. Please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you. In this video, we are going to look at cost and management accounting sample assignment one, question four, which is the apportionment of overheads. And the way it works is they give you some information, but not all the information as it relates to three different production departments. And then they say fill in the missing figure. So the key really is to know what information you need to calculate what you don't know yet. So what do they give you? They give you the budget that allocated expenses per production department. Then they give you the budget that service department apportionment per production department. So what they mean is there is one service department for all the production departments, but of course they don't make money. So the overheads that you are incurring in the service departments must be apportioned in some predetermined ratio to the production departments. And in the case here, you will see there at the bottom, they've actually given you the ratio as five to three to two. Okay. Then um, they, you need the normal machine hours and you have that only for one production department. You need the predetermined absorption rate, but you have that only for one production department. You have the actual machine hours um, for two production departments, but the interesting thing is you have that for the two that you don't have the budgeted machine hours for. And then there is uh, over or uh, under absorption of overhead, and you have that for two, in this case, for two of the production departments. If you are going to use a machine more than what you planned for, then there will be an over absorption of overhead. And if you use a machine for less than what you planned for, then there will be an under absorption of overheads. Okay, so that's all the information that you have. That's all the information that you need. And now we can go and we can calculate these missing figures. So let's have a look at how that is done. Okay, so. What do we know here in the first case? We know, if you know the ratio and you know that two parts of that ratio is 150,500, you can calculate one part by dividing the 155,500 by two, and then you can calculate five parts because you need five parts. You know two parts is 155,500. So you can calculate five parts, 155, 500 divided by two, multiply by five, will give you 388,750. The same with 1B, if you know the ratio and you know the two parts is 155, 500, you know uh, that one part is that divided by two, so now you can calculate three parts. And so the budgeted apportionment for production department B is 233. Now you have all the cost components that you need. We show what you did. You did 1A and you did 1B. Now you are looking for 2. And in 2, you need the predetermined absorption rate. Not a problem. If you have the norm, if you have all the cost and the normal machine hours, you add that divided by the normal machine hours and you get the predetermined absorption rate. On the other side, if you have all the cost and the predetermined absorption rate, but you're looking for the normal machine hours, then you take all the budgeted cost divided by the rate, and you get normal machine hour capacity. So let's have a look there at three. It says, well, if you have the total expenses and the normal hours, you can calculate the absorption rate. Okay, you add two cost components together, you divide it by the normal machine hours, 
you get the absorption rate that, of course, is also expressed in grand. Okay, second one. If you have the total expenses and the absorption rate, you can calculate the normal hours. Add the two expense, budgeted expenses together. You divide it by the given absorption rate and you find your normal machine hours. Okay, what's the fourth thing that we have to calculate? We now have to calculate the actual machine hours. Okay, and this is how you calculate the actual machine hours. If you have the normal hours, and we have the normal hours, you can calculate the real hours by dividing the over or under absorption by the rate and adding it to the normal hours. Now, in this case, you have the normal hours. It's 15,000. You have your over absorption, 69,550, and you divide that over absorption by the amount that you calculated there and then you see that the real the use was 16,500 as opposed to the budgeted of 15,000 which obviously explains the overabsorption. Next one that you need to know. If you have all the hours and the rate you can calculate the over or the underabsorption by subtracting the budgeted hours from the actual and multiplying it by the rate. So in the case here of B, okay, we calculated the budgeted hours and we have the normal hours or the, or the real hours. That's budgeted, that's real. Okay, so what you do, so, okay, my... Uh, Real our actual usage was 19,000. Let me subtract the budgeted from there and then multiply it with the rate that I have. Now, in this case, because your real use is less than your budgeted, you are going to have a negative amount, which simply means that you are sitting there with an under absorption of updates. So that is what will be filled in there with five. Now, in the case of number six, if you have all the RAND values, including the over or the under absorption, you can divide the sum by the actual hours to calculate the rate. Let's see how that is done. Okay, so look here. You have the, the budgeted uh, amount for the production department. You have the apportioned amount for that production department. And you have the overabsorption, okay? And if you take all of that, sorry about that, let's do that, and you divide it by the real hours, why real? Because you are including the over or the underabsorption. Well, then you can find the absorption rate. If, of course, you have now the absorption rate, Calculating the budgeted machine hours is no problem. It's just expenses divided by the absorption rate that gives you the budgeted hours. And guys, now I'm going to make it a little smaller just so that you can see everything in one glance there. So there you have the question. There you have the calculations. And then you will just go to your answer book and you will put these answers that you've calculated here into the table. It's as easy as that. Thank you for watching this video to the end. If you found it valuable, please subscribe and like.